Oh Gott, das ist gut. Yeah, welcome to Kimber Bushcraft. And uh, you can see I have Cornelius with me today. And we're out in Royal Forest. Um, actually a place I've never been in before. There's a lot of beech tree here. 
so uh, it's very open. But uh, I wanted to try something new, and uh, this is it. And you saw I put up my clock as a tarp. I can do that, and I made these uh, out of some food I found here, and uh, yeah, uh, it worked great. And uh, if it's blowing, I won't feel the wind in my back. So that's the reason why. Today is about Viking clothes, as you can see in the uh, video description, and uh, I'll tell you about my Viking clothes I have uh, that I wear when my when I'm out making my uh, Viking hikes, and compare that a little bit with the modern uh, fabric you can buy um, and use as well. Uh, so I hope you'll find that interesting. And uh, today I'm going to make uh, oatmeal uh, porridge, and uh, yeah. I'm not going to use my uh, fire anchor uh, from TJM Metalworks. I'm going to make a tripod, so I have to find some sticks that I can use for that. And I have a little uh, thing. I would like to show you uh, uh, a thing I made back home, uh, so I can uh, lower and, uh, my pot up and down uh, over the fire. So I hope you find that interesting too. Uh, you can see it's a wonderful day. Uh, no clouds in the sky, just a little bit, and the sun is shining. So uh, it's really warm out here, and uh, Cornelius is enjoying himself. Are you ready, Cornelius? Yes, you're enjoying yourself. And uh, yeah, but then uh, I have to find uh, the sticks that I can use for a tripod over my fire. Have you seen this? A sheet I made out of uh, wood. I posted something on Instagram so you can see here. And I burned it with my uh, laser burner. So, yeah, nice little project. And as you can see in the background, uh, there came some fog in here. So uh, yeah, that's okay. I like fog, foggy weather. And look at this, I made uh, such one, an ice splice, I think it's called in uh, English too, we call it oil splice. And uh, yeah, this, uh, some of you know I have been a sailor in my young days. So I learned this uh, when I was a sailor. And uh, if you would like to see how I did this, uh, last in this video, I'll make a little tutorial. It's very difficult to film, so I have also uh, some drawings so you can see how you can make uh, such one. But now I'm going to put it over here, over the sticks. Yep. Just to hold them together. And then I put this one inside. All for a reason. I'll show you why. Yeah. So, yeah. and as you can see now, I can uh, pull up my my pot and secure it in this way. I'll take you closer. You can see, but you can see I can easily take it up and down. It is this little thing I made of wood. Lower down and up, and. Uh, 
secured by putting in it here, in here. Yeah, so just a little thing you can make yourself if you want to. I hope it'll work. I'm going to uh, uh, make some firewood so I can start my porch. Cornelius <laughs> like the firewood too. Yeah, Cornelius is excited again over something. I don't know what it is, but probably a deer. So, yeah. Yeah, and I, I made a new bag uh, for my iron fireball. Um, you know, the one that are going to be sold are. Uh, Having a bag with it, but I need this now. So uh, yeah, I made one, and uh, oh god! Yeah, and uh, I know that the. Fireballs are being sent out soon. Perhaps now, I don't know. It's here in uh, February. They're going to be sent out to all, all the, the ones that uh, supported the Kickstarter project. So, yeah. I'm going to make the oatmeal in my big caldron. And thank you for all the uh, nice comments and all views uh, from this uh, video where I'm presented my my new caldron. I'm so glad you like it and enjoyed it. And uh, yeah. And uh, I think it is like this. Two parts of water for one part of oatmeal. I'll try that. It is in this birch bark container I made myself. And uh, yeah. And some salt in. A little bit of nordure salt and Cornelius you thinking isn't something for me well I got some dog food with me for him so I hope you like that
Yeah, it's almost boiling, so that's great. You know, the Vikings ate a lot of porch, oatmeal, I think so, um, and other kind of porch. So um, this is a real Viking meal and it's easy to make and um, yeah, you're not hungry after this, I can promise you. Perhaps I take it a little bit up, like this, yeah, yeah. And now the porridge is almost done and I think I'll put the coffee over for my coffee. In my little caldron, that I'm one that I call Kimber Caldron. It's not official, but yeah, I think it's cute. And so now I'll take this and put this one over. Yeah. I don't know how you like it, but I like it with a little piece of butter in. And uh, yeah, I also like it with some sugar. But uh, as some of you know, the Vikings didn't have sugar. So instead, I use honey as a sweetener. Yeah, I think that looks nice. Don't you think so? Yeah. Then I just have to eat it. Mm. Mm. delicious. I think that's made of hand. Hmm? Come. Hmm? Put a pot in here. Come. Smell good. I'm going for it. <laughs> Come, Kalidus. You want to taste this? What's it? Come. Let's go speak to that. Yeah? Mmm. Perhaps later. I'll put it over here. You can eat it if you want. And uh, while the water is boiling for my coffee, I'd like to uh, talk a little bit about the Viking clothes. Yeah. And as you can see, I have my uh, uh, winter clothes on. Um, I got some trousers that are made of wool and my leg wraps. Uh, inside I have a shirt or tunic uh, <laughs> made of linen. And uh, this one is a replica of a find in Denmark called Vibor. Uh, the Vibor um, shirt, it's called in English. And uh, on top of that, I have a tunic or a kofte, as it's called in Denmark, made of wool. And uh, yeah, I'm very warm in here. And uh, of course, I have my hood, my Skullham hood. And uh, that's also a replica of a finding in uh, Norway, in Skullham. Uh, yeah, you can see in these pictures 
the findings. And uh, yeah, this can keep me warm uh, during very cold weather. The leg wraps, some of you have asked me uh, how I uh, put them on and I made a little video so you can see how I do that. And you can see it here. And first I begin uh, the bottom of my leg. You can uh, do it the other way around, but I like to do it this way. And uh, first I make three or four uh, rounds and then I put it up. You can see here, up just beneath the knee and down again and cover this place that is open and then up again and uh, tightly around the knee, just under the knee and uh, yeah, then I have this hook I can put on and here you can see how it looks when I have it on yeah and uh, this is the way uh, you are rolling it back uh, you're doing like this this is the back side so you roll it up like this and just continue until you have it like this yeah and uh, beside that I think you I think I'll Put you a little bit closer, you can see my boots yeah. here. And these boots are inspired by a found a finding in uh, Hedeby, Heidebu in the northern part of <coughs> Germany. Now, uh, uh, in the Viking Age, it was a very uh, big city <coughs> in Denmark, uh, one of the most important trading posts. Yeah, maybe you notice this. Put this on my hood. Yeah. And the reason for that is, I'll show you. It's been this one won't uh, pop up in the back and go all the way around front. I have problems with that, so uh, this way it will stay in place and I like it. Uh, I think it's a good solution. And yeah. Yeah. So uh, this is my cloth I have on me uh, when it's winter and I can tell you it's very hot. The leg wraps makes the, uh, my feet and my legs warm and um, yeah, <laughs> that was Cornelius. And the hood uh, makes me warm on the ups, uh, on the upper part of my body. It's really awesome. This hood, uh, yeah, made of wool. I can recommend you that. Uh, and if I take this up, you can see I'm totally protected from uh, wind and sun and so. So uh, yeah, I love this hood. And I also have this uh, hat uh, made from uh, inspiration from a finding in Birke in Sweden. I don't think it suits me very nicely but it's very uh, warm and if it's really cool out here I can put this on instead of my hood but yeah I used it a couple of times. Um, it is a replica of a uh, hat in Fountain Birke but I put this fur on. I told you about that before I just uh, uh, removed some of the fur so it's not so big. Uh, yeah, it's okay, but it's not something I wear often. And uh, beside that, you can see here my summer clothes. Uh, I have uh, some. I have some trousers of linen, and also a, a tunic uh, of linen. And uh, linen is a wonderful fabric. It can uh, uh, keep you a little bit warm during the cold times in the summer. But it's also nice to have on if it's very hot because you can breathe uh, through the uh, through the fabrics uh, on linen. And as you can see here, I also have made a hood for uh, my summer clothes. I made that myself, uh, and I think I have a video where I have uh, show you uh, a template where I made that from. Otherwise, you can find it on the internet. It's not uh, difficult. Uh, Skullham hood, and you'll find it there. But this hood is very nice um, to have on. Uh, also to protect me from the sun and uh, I also like the looks of and, it. And uh, beside that I have this uh, coat that I bought uh, again from Grimfrost. Most of my clothes is from Grimfrost and uh, yeah this coat is uh, when I'm out uh, during the summer perhaps uh, the evening and uh, it's going to be a little bit cold then I can put this uh, coat on and it's made of uh, wool. It's very warm to have on uh, uh, during the cold nights 
So uh, yeah, I can recommend you that and I can also uh, take my belt on that. Uh, no problem there. I've used it sometimes, uh, several times in Norway, as I have shown in some of my uh, videos from Norway. And uh, as I saw, I put up my clock uh, uh, as I can use like a, like a windshield, uh, a tarp. But of course it's uh, meant to be, I can wear it uh, around me, as I show you here. Um, it's uh, made of wool too, so it's also keep me warm both during the summer and the winter if you want to do that. And uh, this little thing is called a fibula. I put on to secure it so it uh, will stay in place, the clock. And uh, yeah, I think it's cool and uh, I like that. Yeah, I like that. And uh, as you can see, I can use it for several things uh, beside that. And uh, beside the boots I showed you before, uh, findings from Hedeby, I have some uh, boots from uh, the findings in, in Oseberg ship. Uh, you can see here the pictures uh, from the findings and uh, they are inspiration uh, from that. And uh, yeah, they're good boots made of leather, but um, the reason why I bought uh, these from, from Hedeby is because they are better to walk in. And sometimes I walk uh, long distances out in the forest to get to the place I want to make my uh, videos and also uh, privately. Uh, so I have to have some uh, good boots on uh, that I can uh, wear in the winter and the summer and I like the boots from uh, from Hiddelby but I also like the boots from Oseberg and I think they look a little bit more like uh, real Viking style. Uh, I use them in the summer and now I'm going to attend to um, some of the Viking marks in Denmark. I think I'll use them uh, during the summer and uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, now uh, for the issue about Viking clothes uh, versus uh, modern fabrics and uh, yeah I really love wool it's so awesome and one of the most important properties is that even if it gets wet it's still warm and uh, the fire you won't if there comes a spark on it it won't ignite my uh, fjellreven uh, trousers just a little spark and I have a hole in the trousers and most of the modern fabric is made out of synthetic fibers and uh, they, can't, uh, they can't resist a little spark from the fire, so you'll burn a hole in them. Uh, but wool is cozy uh, to have on, it's warm and I like it. And uh, yeah, I also have a lot of uh, wool uh, clothes uh, privately that I use. Uh, and modern fabrics, I just got a, a, a shirt from a factory here in Denmark and it's an awesome shirt but when I have it on and if I sweat uh, it won't absorb the sweat so I just my sweat is running down my back and down in my trousers and so that's no good uh, the linen uh, inner shirt I have on it absorbs the, uh, the, the moisture the sweat and uh, yeah and it doesn't get uh, as cold as it if it's uh, cotton and so I can only recommend you to uh, try some wool it's, uh, I made a video about wool and I think I told you that uh, it's un underestimated, uh, if it's the right word. Uh, not many people are using wool. Uh, merino wool, wool is uh, some of the fabrics that are in uh, modern times, but ordinary wool, wool from, um, but ordinary wool from sheep and so on, it's awesome to have on. And uh, yeah, Grimforst has a lot of products made of wool and also linen. So uh, go in and check uh, them out and see if there's something for you. And if you're going to uh, visit the web shop in Grimfrost, I have a link in my video description. And if you use that, uh, I'll have a little percentage of the sale and uh, you can support me like that. So I will be very grateful if you do that. Yeah. Now I think the coffee is almost, uh, or the water is boiling, so I have to come the grains in and uh, yeah, have my coffee out here. As you can see, it's very uh, foggy out here, and I love it. It's so beautiful. And uh, when I drove from home, uh, where I live in Aalborg, it was foggy there. But when I came down here, the sun was shining, and I thought, yeah, it's a good uh, way too, but I like this weather. It's uh, so cozy and uh, uh, a little bit ancient to look at. Yeah. And as I showed in my latest video, I think, 
I made this for coffee now. Birch bark. So easy to to make. It's so easy to um, use this comparing to a, a bag or a pouch. Yeah. You mustn't forget the salt. Uh, perhaps a little bit lower. Yep. This will do. Perhaps you can see I bought a new lens, a wide angle. I'm going to make uh, some changes in the Kimber Cap, put some doors on. So uh, to be able to film in there, uh, I don't have much uh, space in the opening. Uh, I have to buy a wide angle. And it's yeah. So for those of you who are interested in that, my other lens is uh, 32 millimeters and it has a, a if stuff for 1. Uh, 1.4, so it's more uh, able to catch the light, uh, uh, the dim light or the low light in the when I'm filming in Kimber Camp and of course on my uh, Viking uh, adventures with my Viking tent. It's almost boiling. See here, a little bit firewood on more. It's so cozy to hear the cracking of the fire. Don't you think so? Yeah. I made it, I think, then it'll boil and I take it up a little so that it won't uh, boil over. Yeah, now it's boiling. Just take it up a little bit. So it will boil slowly. And uh, in a short while there will be coffee. With my little special thing that I have in this flask. Take it further up, so we we'll stop boiling, and uh, yeah, let it rest for a minute. Or so Cornelius, where are you? Cornelius, come.
Some Cornelius Musen. I was just off, off running for Cornelius because he was gone and I couldn't find him. We went up there and uh, yeah, there are some foxholes up there and I was afraid he was gone down in one of those and perhaps get eaten by the fox or at least uh, injured. So I called for him, I think about 15 minutes and uh, yeah, then finally came and not from that direction. So. He was old. He was. Uh, he was in another place. Cornelius, come out to my. Come out to my. Oh God. Yeah. You mustn't run away like this. I'm worried about you. You know that. Look, look here, look. They have arms. Come. Look at the side of the car. Oh God. So dirty. Have you found another drink? Hmm. And as you saw in the beginning of this video, uh, I made some clips in the woods nearby here with my shield and my uh, Viking axe that I'm going to put into my um, new intro. You have seen that there too, so I hope you like that. Um, it's some footage I have been planning for a long time. Uh, I made a strap for my shield and uh, yeah, I bought a new axe from Cold Steel. Um, you can see here the picture before and after and uh, people are asking me how I uh, customized it and uh, I made a little video so we can see uh, how I did that. Yeah and it is this uh, cold steel Viking hand axe I bought uh, from Lamnia and uh, yeah it has a clear coat on uh, the head and the handle so I have to remove that first. Uh, I do this by applying some uh, paint remover. You can use a grinder and uh, do it that way, but this way it's very easy. Just apply it and then uh, take it off with this tool. And uh, I also used a brush made out of metal to remove the last bit of the coat. And uh, the same with the handle. I applied the, the stuff and then I scraped up the, the coat. And then, um, yeah, I wanted to be black, so I used something called uh, gun black or gun blue. I just applied it on the metal. And you can only do this if the coat is uh, off. Otherwise, it won't uh, be black. So just apply it on the whole axe head. It's very easy and very fast to do this. Yeah. And uh, when it was finished, it has a black matte surface I like it and the handle I burned that uh, with a torch and uh, cut in these engravings so I think it looks nice and cool yeah I hope you like that Still barking, yeah. Yeah, folks, this is all for now. I hope you enjoyed this little video where I talked about the Viking clothes I have uh, on me and uh, in winter and in summer. Two uh, different kinds of 
um, outfit. I have wool, uh, primary wool uh, during winter and linen in the summer, and uh, they are good for those seasons too. So yeah, now I'm heading home uh, with Cornelius, editing this video and uh, launch it sometime later this week. Um, I got a lot of views on my latest two videos. I'm very grateful for that, uh, and a lot of positive response. Uh, and I gained a lot of new subscribers, so I'm so grateful for all the support and help you're giving me out there. And soon I'll be reaching the 100,000 and uh, I have a big giveaway there. I think I promised you that uh, when I made my, was it perhaps 80,000? I can't remember. Perhaps uh, 75, yeah, 75,000 I think. So I'm looking very much forward to that. And then I hope to see you again on the next one. Bye bye and take care. Hmm? My little Viking dog. And here, as I promised, I'll show you how I made uh, this little eye splice. Uh, I'll find out how big it's going to be. But first, I'm going to make a special nut, a kind of stock nut that you can use for this project. Uh, it's actually very easy if you learn it, but it can be difficult to see. Uh, so, yeah. I'll show you here on a bigger piece of rope, cross it and then take it like this and turn it around. And then when you tighten it, it will tighten itself so it will stay in place. It should look like this. Yeah. And I'll show you again. Lay it over, turn it around, and just tighten it. So, yeah, and it's because then the uh, the rope will stay in place when I uh, begin to separate the cords in the in the rope. like this and uh, to secure the ends I use the same little knot so that the ends won't split. Also it's something I learned when I was a sailor. Uh, you can use tape if you want to. It's easier but this is the old school way and I have to do it on all three uh, strings in this little rope. Then I have to decide how big the uh, eye, the, the loop should be. And uh, yeah, then I mark it with a little pen. So I know where I'm going to start the splice. Yeah, this is the tricky part. I find the middle and then I take a stick and uh, separate and put the, the one in the middle in. And uh, yeah, pull it through. And <clears throat> then I do this, I make it with the one to the left and uh, again uh, afterwards the one to the right. Over the nearest and under the next. Yeah, and this is how it should look in the beginning when you have made the first turn. Then you just continue uh, over and under. 
It's very difficult to film and explain it, but I hope you get the picture. Over and under. And now all three have made their second round and I just have to continue. Uh, I think I made three or four here, then I'm finished. And uh, again, checking, it looks good. And uh, it's uh, just for aesthetic reasons, I choose to make a stop notch again. And uh, put it over the ends of the the cordage there, tighten it up and cut away. Also the ends, I don't need them anymore. Yeah, and now it's finished, uh, like the old sailors made it. And uh, yeah, I think it looks great. And here you can see a drawing now how it could be made. So I hope you understand that and maybe you would like to try it yourself.